Welcome. This is Ten Ready uh, Integrated Math Three Practice Test for Ten Ready. Anyway, uh, question number ten. We're in subpart two. You could use a calculator. Probably won't need it here. The question says, "What is sine theta if theta is an angle in the third quadrant and tangent theta equals one?" That third quadrant thing really matters here. Uh, I'll be direct. Have a little director's cut commentary here for a second. I haven't actually taught Math Three in a semester or two, and uh, I haven't taught Algebra Two, and since our school system moved into math three so um, it's been a while and when I was working through this I ended up getting the correct answer and remembered how that I explained it which is much more important to me knowing how to get the answer myself is meaningless knowing how to show it, you how to do it is more important but I got a little surge of excitement because I figured it out and then I thought man my life is either kinda of pathetic or I'm moving right along in my job because I got excited about that anyway let's talk about this question now when, when they're talking about being in the third quadrant, we're using a, a, essentially the idea of the unit circle, but not quite. So we're actually going to create a right triangle down in the third quadrant. Now the third quadrant is here. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Now the thing about it is um, where the right triangle is located really does matter because although you cannot measure a distance as being negative and, and like when you looking at side lengths anyway so when I do a right triangle here unless there's a specific reason for me to define this distance from here to here as being negative then I'm not going to but in a quadrant it absolutely matters and since 3 is like um, kind of like the dark arts position, everything's negative. It's like middle school. It's the worst year, I hate it. That's kind of what uh, quadrant three is. So we're going to use the fact that they're negative to help us come up with our answer. Now, I know I'm going to have to use the ratios, so I might as well write them down. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Depends on what you use to how to get to this point. Maybe use Sokotoa. I use the old aardvark sat on Henry's coat and hat. So the old aardvark tells me T O aardvark. So I'm going to use both of these. So thinking about what that means, visually speaking, I have this triangle I'm creating in that third quadrant, and I want my opposite side over my adjacent side to be positive one, which means I'm going to have to have, uh, since they're both negative links for the sides of the triangle, because if I draw them out here, that sort of thing, let's say this is negative 1, and this is negative 1 going to a point right there, which means that the distance from here to here is technically 1, and the distance from here to here is also 1, but because they're locked into that third quadrant, it is, uh, in this case, I don't know why I put equal, that doesn't, I mean, I guess in this case it would be true, but negative 1 divided by negative 1 does give me 1. So that's what we're dealing with. Now let's look at the triangle uh, in this setup in terms of just by itself without being involved in the quadrant. Now if you remember anything about special triangles you might remember that if you have a triangle that has the both of the legs are the same you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle you don't remember this, go back and look over it. It's kind of nice to have that in your toolbox, especially for the 10 ready test and really for the ACT. Having that stuff memorized is a good idea. So you might have side here and side here. This would be side square root of 2. Now, in order to find the distance here, it's not negative because that distance can't be negative. It's always going to be positive because we haven't defined it specifically as negative. So if I have 1, 1, side, 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 square root of 2, so 1 times the square root of 2, which is just the square root of 2. So that's what this is right here. This is negative 1, this is negative 1, that's side square root of 2. Now I'm ready to find sine. So the opposite side in this case is negative 1. The hypotenuse, which is this length here, is square root of 2. So you'd think, like, oh, I'm probably done now, right? No, of course not. They haven't beaten you up enough. Can't have a root in the denominator. We have to rationalize it so that we have to get rid of it. What do we do to get rid of it? Well, the quickest way to get rid of a square root is to square it and thus have the opposite of the square root. So if I have 
say the square root of 3 and I want to multiply it by the square root of 3 that becomes the square root of 3 squared and they both cancel. If this cancels this and you end up with just 3. So that's what we're going to do in the denominator here. But of course if you don't want complaining if you give something to one side you have to give it to the other so these cancel out and you get 2 this becomes negative times the square root of 2 equals negative square root of 2 over 2. So my answer to this one is B. And that's all you need to do for number 10. Um, like, like you just did nothing. I said that as if there was nothing to that question. There's a lot to that question. But going back and having some memory of, okay, here's what we did with sine, here's what we did with tangent. Think about what that quadrant component really means, and you should be able to get these correct. If I'm in quadrant 4, my x value is going to be positive, and my y value is going to be negative. In quadrant 2, the y value is positive, and the x value is negative. So be very careful about where you uh, create your uh, angles and what the values are supposed to be. And always remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive.